and we brought, I brought with me a suitcase, one little suitcase with a few outfits and one big suitcase packed, jam packed with things that, that the congregation brought in every Sunday for a few weeks to donate to the people in Togo that we visited. And it was there that I met Dr. Abachi. He was the translator on the tour and we uh, got to know each other and, and got to be close. And then when I returned, I, we stayed in touch through Facebook. And when it came time for our Kwanzaa celebration, which we had to do, that was 2019, we had to do through Zoom, I asked Dr. Abachi if he would please be one of the speakers, which he agreed to. So there's a, a brochure that we have that, uh, they're over there on the table, where you can read about Dr. Abachi. He is an educator, he's a professor at the University of Lomi, and he helps young people learn entrepreneurship. One of those young people sitting next to him, that beautiful lady, Princess Zion, who is now his wife, and she was one of our first recipients of this scholarship fund when she was a medical student at the University of Lomé, and with the money that she received from the scholarship, it helped her to uh, purchase used clothing for resale, and then she went on to develop her own business making biscuits to sell. And they'll tell you a little bit more about their endeavors there in Togo. So with that, I would like to introduce Dr. Abachi and Princess Zion. Give me one minute to do a sound test. Get that and unmute. We have a sound check. Oops. Hey, I can hear you. You can hear us? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you now. So, welcome, Dr. Abachi and Princess Zion. Thank you, uh, Darlene, and thank you to the whole limited. Can you speak now? Or? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, my laptop is not working well, so we have to use an ESD. And both of us cannot hear you at the same time, but we are managing it. Um, uh, once again, uh, good evening. Uh, this is uh, the time now here in 50. I think you are in time over there in the West. Uh, it's a great pleasure for us to be live here and uh, to be part of the service of today. I'm Dr. Kofi Aboti, I'm an educator that I have said it. Uh, I've been uh, working uh, with young people, especially young adults, in, in uh, coaching, in guiding and in training them for a better life. Um, so I, but from my childhood, I've had a heart for the, the needy, the desperate. You know, here, here in Africa, um, of course, every continent has, a, has their issues. The Africa is one of the continents in which we see a high rate of poverty. We see uh, many people going hungry, and we see all kinds of young people lost. I, I do remember uh, Back in 2012, 2012, we had a, a missionary from the U.S., Gary Underberg, working for Gideon International. And uh, one day as we were driving through Lome, he looked at the, the, the people, many young people lying down by the street, some sitting idle, not doing anything, and it was so surprising, like, what's wrong? So are you telling me all these young people are jobless? All these young people don't have anything to do like why they are there? Uh, it was difficult for me to explain to him that yes, these young people are jobless, many of them don't know what to do, and, and that's why they are like that. I grew up in a very uh, difficult situation. Uh, my father was a uh, 
ligaments, right hand. So uh, he, at the time, couldn't take care of his children because of jealousy from the different uh, coach parts. So he had to abandon everyone and let every woman take uh, care for their own children. So although I had a father, I was like, I was raised at, um, I was raised by a single mom because it was not a couple, it was not a family as that, it was uh, me and mom, and uh, she had six of us, typical for her to raise all of us, take care of us at the same time, and uh, this was uh, very challenging for me to study and uh, get the daughter in just a pure grace, it's a miracle, I uh, have to say miracle. Not normal for someone like her as a farmer to farm it with rudimentary tools. Uh, our family, especially the one the mom is doing, is not mechanized, it's not 100% traditional like this were in the 17th century or 18th century. No machine. Uh, so, seeing poverty with my eyes, experiencing poverty growing up in a poor situation where at times hungry all day uh, or you can just take one meal a day so this developed in me a heart for the needy a heart for the poor that's why I've been always uh, waiting for that now uh, in my church uh, at the time I was uh, in the Atomic Church back then it was uh, very I realized that I do not understand the Great Commission. Uh, many people just come to church, and there are many uh, church leaders just wait for people to come, for men to come, uh, so that we preach to them, for them to have their souls saved. Uh, but then we forget that out there, there are many people who need to be saved. And they will be saved just by us going to them and telling them just love you. Where they are going hungry, where they are jobless, where they are they're dying under some heavy burden. Uh, the mission sometimes or at times must be at attending to their needs and then allowing them to discover the love of Christ to us. Many people do not understand that and it is a subtle reality. So I took upon this I upon myself, I will go sometimes to visit some members of the church at school, uh, encouraging them, uh, some who felt even abandoned by the church. Uh, here in, in, in Africa, many people take the church as the as savior, as, as, the, 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 as the law itself. Like, when they go to church, they are expecting the church to, to attend to their needs, to help them. And uh, it's not easy because so many people are, are brought into the church in the, not easy for church people to organize and support them. So I took it upon myself to, to at least visit some of them, those who are desperate, those who are, who are losing hope, to encourage them to give them hope. Some of them are, are sick and just need someone to encourage them for them to, to receive hope that, and to be strong and face the, those difficult times that uh, many people are not ready. So I will do those things at times. And uh, until uh, I, I thank God when I met uh, Darlene uh, during the compassion trip they had in Togo. I've been working with compassion for uh, uh, more than 10 years now. Compassion, when compassion started in Togo, I was one of the first people to join in 2011. We used to go visit children, uh, bring the sponsors to come to visit the children. So I, that also helped me to get close to the children and uh, see their needs. So darling, uh, we discussed a lot about uh, what we, uh, we can do and also we discussed about children, about the situation and religion and all this. So after darling went back to the U.S. to show my implication with the young people, I think that was the post I shared where we came to some villages to share extract books, textbooks to children at the beginning.
Mino de Tuyet, et la ménicule qui est d'Agostou, without uh, the, the necessary uh, tool book to, to write on, on and uh, to study. Uh, it, is, it, has, it has a very best situation behind <coughs> this package, you know, especially in good areas in the state. So that's when uh, uh, Dallin, uh, with uh, Reverend Robinson, decided that support so that we can make a difference in the life of uh, those students in Togo, especially uh, as I'm in the university, the university one, because many of them, I can't mean that the school fees or the university fees are very low. Not that expensive at all for the public university. But even for some people to find the transportation from their home to the campus, even for some of them to be able to, to even pay this low fee is not easy at all and it's very, very, very difficult. So uh, we started uh, uh, initially with uh, 25, uh, 50. Uh, sorry, the $50 scholarship. And one of the first people I thought of was uh, my current wife, uh, Princess Zion. She was uh, just one of my friends. We are very friendly. Um, I, I thought of her because not only she was in a difficult situation, but she was one of these students who have a lot of projects, who usually share her projects with me. And I do. Uh, Exchange a lot to bear on me. So when I got this uh, the first scholarship, I, I gave it to her, and then she was able to purchase new clothes that she, she shared on with her mom. Her mom helped her sell them, and that was that was that helped them at the time support her needs. And then she could even uh, uh, use the proceeds to invest in, in her second business, what was the business uh, biscuit uh, making uh, factory or uh, business that she developed herself at home by by uh, sending the YouTube tutorials on, on how to, to make business and all this. She was able to make good business, uh, good biscuits until COVID-19 broke and after COVID-19, the Ukrainian war and uh, the price of the wheat a wheat flower has, has uh, skyrocketed here in, in Togo. And uh, she, has, uh, she was obliged to, to leave or to abandon the business for the, for the time. She called me to tell me uh, how to, to purchase those things and, uh, and make a profit and benefit with them at this time. It was very difficult, very difficult. But uh, we're planning to resume very time. So, uh, apart from that, now many young people have benefited from the program. Uh, until recently, I also discovered that there are some mothers. In fact, I, was, I had a friend who discussed with me about a certain mother. This child is very brilliant, but she is obliged to let the child stay home because. Her means are so limited, and she cannot continue supporting her child. Her child was going to uh, senior high school, so it was terrible. And as she said, she used to help them, but now it's too much for her also to can continue. And then I have discussed with uh, Darlene, and we were able to support her with uh, uh, funding that is sufficient enough that. Uh, good enough to help her uh, invest in her business so that she can continue supporting this child. And uh, she was so, so glad and the blessed the Lord for this uh, blessing, this unexpected blessing that came to her. And also, after her, uh, the Lord also brought to my mind that this woman I used to support. Uh, her name is Noeli. She is a mother of, uh, of uh, five, I think she has five children. Difficult for her to support them. I remember quite in the past, there was a time when some of the students, uh, some of her children did not complete the year because she was not able to pay all the school fees. And the school director or the principal would not allow the children to take 
to get an exam. So, but at the time, with COVID and my means went down, I, 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 I couldn't continue supporting her anymore. But then I suggested that uh, I have to select her and offer her the scholarship. She was so glad for her business was totally down. She showed me pictures of her, her son where she took her photos, her photos. Uh, it was almost empty. So when she got a fund, she just tried to market the place for products to sell and uh, she was so, so happy and blessed the Lord for the donors and all the people that got involved in it. So currently, even today, I wanted to share with you the story of our last recipient, but he couldn't send the story in time, on time, so I can't share it with you now, but I will send it to Darlene so that she can uh, share it with uh, all, all the church and <coughs> This young man is in the university, a private university, of course, being uh, uh, sent by um, the man of God who accepted to help. But when you hear the story of this young man, what he's going to do, uh, he is he, he just a sign or just a, a, a way for the Lord to tell us that yes, the, 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 the farm is very big, the work is ahead of us, very big. There are so many people who, who need support and uh, for whom any job or uh, any little amount to gain will, will mean the Lord's helping and taking uh, request to them and they will feel so, so blessed. So um, I think I will stop here and give the floor to my, my dear wife for her to share her story. But before I give her the floor, I would like also to, to come to the issue of this family supporting uh, for uh, about uh, a year, a year and a half now, or a year, I think, yes, a year. That's uh, Justine Agrivol family. They lost their mother uh, when the mother had just a few, no, just when she gave birth to her last born, she, she passed away. And there are, there are four of them, four young girls she left behind. She, the, the, the mother was a single mother. Uh, she, she was not living with her husband. Her husband is in Grand Haven. And these children, the young, uh, beautiful daughters, found themselves helpless with uh, little support from family and some people, but not enough for them to pay for the school fees, to support her daily needs. Uh, and uh, she, she came to me at the time because she heard about my, my act. Especially after we organized a conference for young entrepreneurs, she came to me and we talked. And then I suggested her case to Darlene. And I explained that this young lady, we can't just give her a scholarship and abandon her, but like say, okay, go start something. And do. Because she has uh, three other moms to feed. And uh, uh, two of them, including herself, are still going to. So how, how can she uh, start a business now that will support all of them at the same time? That would be impossible. So we need to support them with a monthly uh, monthly support for, for her to continue invest in her business, but also to be able to support their daily needs. And uh, we've been helping them with, uh, a hundred dollars every month, and I, I can tell you it's making a big difference in her life. Uh, in December, for Christmas, she asked that we, we had a, I usually visit them, visit them to pick up their grain, and uh, she, she explained to me she needed to purchase more for Christmas so that she can sell more and, uh, and make some money for the uh, expenses for, for the business also to grow. So I have to give her two scholarships in December, which helped her purchase more food that uh, she, she's trading on in 
Uh, I, I didn't tell them in this since January, some I think two weeks ago, and they are doing quite well. They are forever grateful, and she just repeating. You can imagine how their life would be now without uh, the this farm we've been giving them and to support them. So once again, thank you. Uh, and the law says that the, the mission is fast or the, the, the farm is very large that we should pray the Lord to send more harvests uh, to the farm, more workers to the farm. Yes, the farm needs more hands. As I, I, I venture into this, I realized that uh, doing this, uh, money is not only the, on, the only way we do it, but also even if you have a, you, don't, you want to do this job, your goodwill, you want to just go venture and support people without money also, it's, it's, it's not easy because I've been doing it without much support and you, it, you won't feel very useful to these people. And now that we are adding money to the effort we are doing, it's making a lot of difference in the life of these people. Yes, we need to also pray the law again to give us more hands, uh, to make more hearts uh, available to support and uh, to help people discover the love of God, feel love so that they can give their hearts more to the Lord and to bless more. Uh, thank you so much. Now let me give the floor to my wife for three or five minutes to share her story with you. Thank you. So when I was at primary 
like plus five or plus four, like that. I used to sell goods with my mom, uh, tomatoes, okra, and things like that. So when I come back from school, I came back from school at 5 p.m. I I saw goods and I went out to sell. So if I sell all, oh, I, I brought out, I was really happy. So I can say, uh, when I was very, very young or a little girl, I know how to sell things or manage little business because for my uh, my feeling fee, mom used to buy me uh, sweets. So I sold it at school. And with the benefit, I use I, I use it for my uh, feeding fee. So growing up, I was I have this on in, in in my mind to do something myself because my parents would don't have enough to help me or don't have enough to do all I need or all I want. So I have to produce something myself. I have to make money myself but how to make money i am a girl i can say but i have boys i can go there and it is easy to me to have money but when i see my mom's situation i say no it is not the solution because if i get i uh, i got a pregnancy or i have a child in our situation how can i help my my father or how can, can I be a solution for their problem? So I use my time to, to, to learn that and managing a little business up and down to uh, to take care of myself. So when I, I left my father, Lumi because my father and my parents are at Abu. It is a village, so we don't have university there. I came to Lumi and I was with my uncle, my mother's brother. So there, I see it is there. I see that fathers or parents can do more than what my parents were doing to me. My uncle was very uh supportive to me so with what he was giving me he he, he never allowed uh, his children to sell or make business apart from their school but me i i say ah, but my my uncle don't want me to do something so i have to make economy so i have i have to save money because I know that I won't, I, I won't stay there uh, for all my for all my education or my study. So two years after I left my uncle because of family problem and some situation, and I went to hostel at the university. So there I started my business with what with my little economy. I started doing tips and I sold it at school. So at the university, they called me tip seller, something like that. It is how the, my classmates or my colleagues used to call me. And me, I don't care because <laughs> you call me tip seller and me, you give me your money. So. <laughs> <laughs> So Mr. Aboti used to buy tea from me. He, he used to buy two bottles or three bottles like that. So if I need it, I used to call him and say, it is, it is ready, okay, how many bottles do you need? So I, sometimes I used, I used to support him buying, <laughs> buying things and we became friends like that. So 
I used to uh, talk with him about my project so that me I don't want to work for the government for a long time. I have to have my own business. So we used to talk more about um, more about my business. So one day he came to me and he told he told me about the, the scholarship and I said I am I am ready to take it. He said it is it is it is not uh, it, it is not a big fund. I said no, it is not a problem. Even if it is ten thousand people, I know what I can do with it because I have many plans. So even if it is a little money, I know what to do with it. So I won't start thinking about what to do. So he brought me the money and I bought clothes and he paid and he paid it. I spent some parts with my mom and I sold those parts some parts here. So with my friends also and something like that, I used to if I have a friend or a new friend, I don't, I don't, I don't like to have a friend who you have my situation or the person who is like me. I used to have friends who are bigger than me or have good situation that me, the better situation than me, so that I can, I can talk or I can add something from them. It is not like I'm asking money, but I want them to support me mm -hmm. uh, doing something myself so so that tomorrow I can be a help for them. So I used to have little help from my friend's side and with, with my benefit I made with sell, uh, clothes selling and cheap selling. I started my business and Mr. Aboji was very surprised because it was a big investment. Uh, you have to buy the ovens. The ovens. Buying this, I went with him to the uh, oven seller and I, I want him to sell it to me but I don't have the, I don't have all, all the money. You have to take a five and after a month or one or one month and a half I will go I will bring the rest. But he was not he, he, he don't want to accept at first. It is because of that I brought the abode and he was very con convinced or confident because he's a big man so he said he would think he can he can fly. So when we come back to when he came back home he said, How can I or how would I pay the rest of the money? I said, Don't don't worry, I'll I'll pay. Even when I went there to pay, he didn't know it is after that after paying the rest and he he informed him that uh it is so, so I, I, I started the business, it was going well until COVID. So when I see that, I say, I can't continue using myself like that because it is not bringing me any benefit because of the inflation. The inflation. So I have to stop or make a pause but it is not a, an end. I will, I will definitely restart it soon, and I hope God will will help me or will help us. So I'm very happy, and I thank you for listening. And I hope God will open doors and keep blessing you. 
so that you can help us and still helping us and more than that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kofi and Princess Diane, for joining us. My talk is on the 23rd Psalm. In November, I read a devotional in our daily bread that made me look at the 23rd Psalm different, especially 23rd. Six, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Follow is a passive word, casual. Jesus is, was not and is not passive or casual. He is peaceful, yes, but not passive. The rest of the 23rd Psalm has action. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me down the right path. He protects me from my enemy, the devil, and other humans that want to hurt me. He feeds me with his word. Since I have started writing this piece, this psalm has come up in devotionals four more times. Obviously, that means I'm supposed to look deeper into this particular psalm. I have found the original Hebrew word that David used was radof, which means, which is a much more active word. It means pursue or chase. Jesus wants me to make sure, make us sure that his mercy and goodness will be in our lives as his father's children and his brothers and sisters to give us strength and courage for each day. Jesus is not casual about this desire. He was never casual in his teachings or choosing his disciples or doing his father's work. Jesus gave up everything for us, sinners all. So he is going to pursue us with all the goodness and mercy we can stand if we are willing to accept it with a passion that we may not understand because he loves us so much. When I was saying this 23rd Psalm, I am talking to Jesus, but I came to realize I should be talking to God because David was writing and singing to God. Jesus was not yet born when he was writing. Everything I said about Jesus is even more true about God. Now when I recite the 23rd Psalm, I realize that I am reaching out to God just as when I say the Lord's Prayer. It is important for us to realize that the more we reach out to God and Jesus, the more they will reach out to us to guide us, and they will pursue us when we go astray. Now, I read also from another book, uh, written by Elmer L. Towns. To think of goodness and mercy as God's sheepdogs, making sure I stay in the flock by nipping at my heels. God's goodness gives me wonderful things to keep me in the flock, and God's mercy is overlooking my failures. <coughs> These sheepdogs will be with me for the rest of my life, just as the shepherd will always guide me. So I no longer use the word follow when I, when I say the song. I say pursue, because it makes me realize how valuable I am to God. Thank you very much.
thank you for joining us on Missionary Sunday for uh, History of Missionaries. For a report from Lome Togo about your efforts to help others uh, to support and grow their businesses. And uh, the talk by Susan about pursuing um, God's love and Him pursuing us. Until next week, uh, this is Owen Chapel AMB Church. Uh, if you would like to send in any contribution or your tithe, the information should be on the screen. Or you can call the pastor and he'll come and gladly uh, take your tithe or offering. Until next week, God bless you and God keep you. Brother Simon, you're in charge.